Did Apple sell a million watches over the weekend? Will your next tablet run Windows? Will I get fired for admitting that I don't watch Game of Thrones? Stick around to find out. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 315 for Monday, April 13th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome, I'm Megan Maroney. This is a show where we talk about the most important, or at least the most interesting, or at the least the most interesting stories that I think are the biggest news of the day. Joining me today is Devinja Hardawar, Senior Editor at Engadget. Welcome back, Devinja. Hey, Megan. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Thanks for coming. So judging by the gasps in the room when I asked if I was going to be fired, if I uh, admitted <laughs> to watching, um, not watching games of not watching. Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost called it Games of Thrones. <laughs> I, Ooh, know it's, I know okay. it's Game of Thrones. Wow. Okay. And I did read the first book. And okay, I do, good. and I did think that the portrayal of women uh, was horrible. And I did watch <laughs> the first season, and I do think mm -hmm. that the HBO does an amazing job um, at uh, making more full 3D mm -hmm. women that um, would be in the real world mm -hmm. if the real world was like <laughs> the Game of Thrones. So yeah. I just wanted to be clear about that. But but yeah. first, I wanted to stop to start talking about the uh, the Microsoft Surface. Three mm -hmm. that you had a chance to play with. It's the non-pro version of the tablet laptop hybrid running Windows 8.1. Tell us what you think about it. Um, yeah, I'm working on my review for it right now uh, for, for Engadget, and uh, I really like it. And the weird thing is um, I have really like the Surface Pro series just because they're more fully featured. Uh, the Surface series has always been kind of uh, just not very powerful. They couldn't really do much. The first Surface and then the Surface 2, those ran Windows RT, which could only run Windows 8 applications. And uh, there just, there haven't been that many great Windows 8 applications. They also ran Office, but kind of stripped down versions. Uh, this Surface 3 runs full Windows 8.1, which is really nice. Um, has an Intel Atom processor in it. So it actually feels like a real computer, but it's the price of a tablet, like the iPad. It's $499. Um, the only difference there, though, is that you have to spend an extra $130 bucks, uh, to get the keyboard that snaps onto the bottom. That's something I wish Microsoft would just kind of just bite the bullet and put the keyboard price together with the Surface because um, it's kind of misleading. Um, but as it is, you know, as a $499 tablet slash computer. Um, it's very nice. It works really well. Uh, I've been able to do a lot of work with it. It's not like a gaming machine, but it's a very capable machine. And uh, for anyone looking for like a hybrid laptop slash tablet um, that's really light, I think it's about uh, 1.3 pounds. Um, it's a really interesting machine for sure. So you're, you t tested it on a version that was running 8.1, not a preview build of Windows 10 or I do. I have Windows 10 on another Surface, but not on this one. Right. Yeah. And so anyone who buys this now will be able to upgrade for free to Windows 10. This yeah, yeah. Comes out. Anyone who buys it now, as well as, you know, any Windows 8 or Windows 7 users. So everybody, everybody gets the upgrade. It's kind of nice. It is interesting that they really, mm -hmm. it, they hide the fact that you have to pay extra for the keyboard. I mean, all it, the it, advertising. It just, yeah, I don't, I don't quite see the logic in that because... They want the nice price, basically. They want the iPad price, and I feel like uh, it would be more truthful just to say, hey, it's $5.99 for everything or something like that. Um, but then it doesn't seem like you're competing with the iPad, and that could be a problem for Microsoft. I don't know. Right. So now, um, as a consumer, would you get this instead of an iPad or instead of a comparable um, Android tablet? It depends on what I'm looking for. Um, if I were a student, um, especially for like uh, parents looking for something for a high school kid or something, uh, it would be an interesting machine because it's actually a capable computer. It's not just a tablet. Uh, it can run full Windows applications, which is very nice. So if you want to multitask and run Office and a bunch of things, this may be a better choice than an iPad or an Android tablet. I'm actually not a big fan of big Android tablets in general just because there aren't that many great big, uh, there aren't many great Android apps that take advantage of big tablets. Um, I like small Android tablets for like the Nexus 7. Right. So how does mm -hmm. the Surface 3 compare to the Surface Pro? 
They're very right. different, right? So yeah, the Surface Pro 3, I believe, starts at $799, so 300 bucks more. And that is just, that's a fully featured Ultrabook, you know, that has Core i5 or Core i7 processors. It's a tad heavier. Uh, they're both about the same thickness. Uh, if you were looking for like a MacBook Air replacement or some like a fully featured computer that you could actually do ga a bit of gaming, maybe some video editing on, uh, the Surface Pro 3 is a much better choice. You'll just pay a little more for it. Uh, I really like it, though. Um, I, uh, it would be nice for it to have a slightly bigger screen at some point, but it's close to 13. It's pretty usable. I've used it for several months with, after my review. And do you like the pen? The pen also mm -hmm. doesn't come with it, though. The pen $50. also doesn't, yeah, the pen doesn't come with the Surface 3 either. It does come with the Surface Pro 3. That's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it works well on the Surface 3. And this is also the first uh, lower end Surface that actually works with the pen. So that's kind of nice. It's, it has, you know, full style support, um, <clears throat> pressure sensitivity on the screen. It's It could be a very useful art tool for people. Right. And then with Windows 10, mm -hmm. there's the full mock-up in uh, the browser that, you know, that they're touting all those features that you could use. Right, right. In Spartan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's switch gears to Apple. The Apple Watch, mm -hmm. of course, went on sale on Friday at 12.01 Pacific time, and it's sold out 10 minutes later. Um, now, there's been a lot of debate about whether this was due to high demand or low supply. Mm -hmm. Of course, Apple isn't saying, um, and we'll probably never know. The only information about sales that we do know came from Slice Intelligence, and that's mm -hmm. where all the stories that you'll read on the Internet, wh whoever mentions that one million people are getting it from this one source, yeah. they, they gathered it. Purchasing information from um, an app, the, their app that tracks online purchases. How does that work? Um, I mean, I can't really speak to their methodology. Um, there are a lot of startups that basically take in people's data and how they, you know, what they intend to purchase, uh, what they actually do purchase. Um, I am not too familiar with Slice, but I've seen a bunch of others like Flurry. Um, they're an ad platform. Uh, I've seen a bunch of others that just look at consumer intent based on what they see on their platform. So can't really speak to Slice. Um, it's still an interesting number. It's definitely all statistics, right? Because they only have, uh, I think, a couple thousand people that they were actually able to get the information from. And they're just kind of extrapolating from that. Uh, until Apple actually gives us numbers, we won't really know exactly how many Apple Watches have been sold. But I, I think for you know something like this, uh, the first major release uh, of a whole new product line, a million in over the initial weekend, that sounds about right in the U.S. at least. Right. I mean, it's probably even, mm -hmm. you know, it's small. It's probably more than that. But yeah. Who knows? yeah. Now, did you expect Apple to come out today and say how many they'd sold or give us any idea of numbers? I think Apple earlier said that they weren't going to be breaking out Apple Watch numbers. And that's it's probably for the better just because uh, they've been selling so many iPhones and so many iPads lately to have a new product come out that's maybe in the single digits. Uh, it would seem a little disappointing to people, even though that's a little unfair. But yeah, the stock market isn't very rational. So, you know, even having single digits numbers out there, even if it's realistic, it probably wouldn't be good for Apple. So they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to hide it for a bit. Right. And yeah, we, we won't know for a while, maybe, I guess. Yeah. So we talked before, we are both waiting for our Pebble time to yes. arrive. Yeah. Did you just get the Pebble time? You didn't get the Pebble steal. You didn't well, that was really annoying that the steal was announced like a week after the time. And so I, I put in my pre-order for the time on Kickstarter and that's coming. But the, I, I would have liked the choice to be able to do the steal at the same time too. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and so neither of us are waiting for our Apple Watch yet. I have not some yet. sources uh, of people who yeah. might have ordered one and might not want it. So <laughs> Right. And anybody can just go in and do the try-on uh, thing at an Apple store. So if you have an iPhone, you know, you have a free afternoon or something and you're curious, that's actually the only way for you to touch and feel an Apple Watch. And I'm probably going to do it just for fun uh, at some point soon. Right. So HBO Now, of course, had its first success story last night. There were no glitches mm -hmm. in the Game of Thrones, Silicon Valley, Veep premieres. Um, yeah. How did you watch them? I watched it on HBO Now, uh, I think about half an hour after, it was like around 9.30. Um, but even people who started watching it 9 o'clock Eastern, which is when Game of Thrones airs, um, it worked fine. There were no major issues. And that's surprising because a lot of people expected problems because HBO Go kind of crumbled under certain uh, finales and season premieres. So kind of a good sign for HBO Now. 
Uh, we also know this one. This service is running on different architecture than HBO Go, uh, something they licensed from MLB, I believe. So a little, I guess this technology is just much more stable. And they've also done this for long enough that they know about the issues to look out for. Right. And apparently Sling had problems last night. Sling TV right. that, you know, $20 a month and you can add HBO for 50 15 and an additional 15 and and they had glitches and they had glitches last week with march madness yeah. um i mean I, that's the one i've been a cord cutter for 10 years i haven't had cable and that's what mm -hmm. i'm just thinking maybe if i do get you know fired for not watching game of thrones then uh maybe sling tv was the thing that i was gonna get but now i'm not so sure i mean have you sling, what, yeah what do you think i've been using it for a while it's it's very nice um the thing is it is very glitchy like even just watching the travel channel or something on an off-peak time sling tv gives me issues i've noticed that every sling tv app uh, is just very different the ones on roku feel different from the ones on you know uh the xbox one and some are just a lot more unstable than others i'm hoping that they just kind of get those software issues ironed out at some point because it's a really nice service when it works um i'm addicted to like the anthony bourdain shows and all those things so to be able to see those on demand uh, that's very nice so i'm going to keep using it so how do you watch it through an xbox or through um roku? i so I, I bought a roku tv stick just to have it like in my living room and that sling tv app is just terrible mm -hmm. and i think that's just because there's very limited hardware in the roku stick uh, but i also put on the xbox one and that app is a lot more stable so that's pretty much my primary one right now that's good to know another interesting thing about the game of thrones premiere i heard that um mashable was reporting that if you periscope your Game of Thrones, you will mm -hmm. uh, lose your Periscope account. Um, wow. And I wonder if that was really, uh, who would watch someone else's Periscope stream of Game of oh. Thrones? I asked that question about games and then look at Twitch is what a multi-billion dollar company now. So I don't know. I, somebody will watch it. Um, I do movie reviews and a podcast too. And, uh, you know, people listen to us when we do commentaries, but doing something totally live, that would be, I, I don't know what the point of that is. Because then you're just watching, yeah, you're watching this throw, the show through somebody's tiny little screen rather than experiencing it on your own. It's so weird. Right. I guess, yeah, I hadn't thought about the fact that if there, people are adding commentary mm -hmm. um, to that, oh, I thought it was just, I just need to watch it and that's the, my free way I'm going to watch it, which yeah. I'm sure is happening yeah. too. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Devendra. You also have another uh, another story up today. Anyone who's interested in uh, gaming or your coder, if you want a really amazing, super uh, laptop, what was that review? That was the, uh, was, HP just announced the Omen Pro, which is, it's a, it's a very powerful laptop, kind of a derivative from Voodoo. If you remember those computers from back in the day, they bought Voodoo a while back, and now we're seeing some laptops that kind of have that style. So last year they released the Omen, which was a really powerful gaming laptop. The Omen Pro looks like something that's made for you know uh, movie editors, people who work in 3D. It's a super very fast machine uh, and starts at like, uh, it's over $2,000. So it's a very expensive machine. But if you have the money and you want killer hardware and a really nice looking device, the Omen Pro looks cool. Well, thanks. And I recommend anyone interested to check out Devendra's review on Engadget. And uh, you can follow Devendra on Twitter. Oh. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We'll talk to you Hi. soon. Later. Coming up, put on your net neutrality suit and unlock Android with the sound of your voice. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who just want to make things happen. Maybe you want to take better photos, develop an app, learn to code, sharpen your Photoshop skills. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Do you want to sharpen your business skills to ask your boss for a raise or make yourself more marketable to find a new job? I recommend lynda.com courses like Solving Common Project Problems, the Office 365 Essential Training Series, which covers Excel, Word, Access, PowerPoint, and more, and a brand new course they just released called Getting Promoted. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to visit lynda.com slash TN2. Sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's lynda.com slash TN2. And we thank them for their support. 
Now on to a few more stories we're following today. CNET reports that the net neutrality order was officially published in the Federal Register today, all 400 pages of it. This means two things. One, the rules will take effect 60 days from today. That will be June 12th. This also means that companies can now start suing to overturn the rules. And they didn't waste any time either. Industry trade group Uni United States Telecom Association filed a lawsuit claiming that the net neutrality rules are arbitrary and capricious and violate federal law. Sources at Android Police say that a new smart lock feature is rolling out with Android 5.0 Lollipop devices. It's called Trusted Voice, and it allows you to d ditch your password and unlock your Android device just with the sound of your voice. The new feature can be accessed through Google Play services, and it works alongside other smart locks, such as Trusted Places that will only unlock your phone when you're in a designated location, and Trusted Face that we've talked about here before that lets you unlock your phone with your selfie. According to a blog post at the Microsoft Malware Protection Center, the Redmond Giant has joined forces with CDI Japan, Kaspersky Lab, and Trend Micro to take down the Simba botnet. Simba is malware that has infected over 770,000 computers in more than 190 countries. Microsoft says that if you've been infected by Simba, run a scan of your environment using Microsoft's Safety Scanner, Microsoft Security Essentials, or Windows Defender. Trend Micro and Kaspersky have their own proprietary scans. If you're listening to this right now, there's a good chance that you're not infected because you probably patch your software. So do a random act of kindness today and spread this news to someone who you don't think gets their regular updates. And finally, researchers at Cornell say they've developed an algorithm capable of identifying internet trolls with 80% accuracy. An article in the stack links to the Cornell study, Antisocial Behavior in Online Discussion Communities, which describes internet trolls as having common characteristics that can be tracked and accounted for, such as being persistent, provocative, and semi-literate. The paper also found that communities that were less tolerant tended to foster trolls more quickly. The study took place over 18 months in popular communities such as CNN.com, political hub Breitbart, and the vocal gaming communities at IGN.com. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.